Please pray with me. Lord, take me where you want me to go. Let me meet who you want me to meet. Tell me what you want me to say. And please, keep me out of your way. Amen. Please be seated. New beginnings. New beginnings. It's the theme of the day. We have new beginnings in the offing here and within our own community with construction almost upon us. Another adult mission trip to Costa Rica is about to leave with a whole new group. And as if on cue, we have this gospel reading about new ministries and the people who step up to handle them. In today's gospel, John the Baptist has been arrested and whisked away from the action, and Jesus begins his new ministry. The news of his cousin has been, that his cousin has been arrested causes him to withdraw, the gospel says. Not necessarily the reaction you would expect if you were told news that your cousin and lifelong friend was taken to prison without just cause. Would you not want to protest, gather a band of friends, and maybe even try to break him out of prison for this unjust cause? In the Gospel of Matthew, the word withdraw is used ten times to describe Jesus' response to threat. Now this is not cowardice or self-preservation or strategy on his part. Instead, this represents Jesus' alternative vision to how things ought to be, how his kingship will be different than earthly kingships. It's a vision that's both non-violent and non-retaliatory. Jesus models for us a peaceful way to respond when things are challenging. A crucial point as we look at our own actions now and in the near future. But it's not just Jesus' ministry that's beginning. Today, we hear of the very first four disciples being called to follow Jesus. Simon Peter and his brother Andrew, John and James, the sons of Zebedee, all of them fishermen. They already had work, you see. They already have something useful and important to do, and they're not looking for a new life. Life around the Sea of Galilee, well, it revolved around fishing. It was a major industry in Jesus' time. And these men weren't idle. They aren't out looking for some new cause to fill their free time. They do not seek Jesus. He seeks them. It reminds me of countless disciple stories throughout time. One I'll share to illustrate our human condition. A man brought up in the church with a faith that he didn't fully comprehend that called him into worship, study, and service from a very young age. A man like any of us who grew up, went to school, built a solid and successful career, started a family, and never drifted too far from his faith. As this man, man grew in his faith over time, he found himself more and more pulled into various different ministries within his church. This was where his most rewarding friendships lie. This was where he felt God touch his heart. This man was also an avid runner, clocking in 25 to 30 miles per week in solitary time, pondering the issues of his life and the times. On one of these runs, deep 
deep in the woods and seemingly alone, he had the strongest impression that God was calling him to something more, calling him into the ministry as a priest. He immediately dismissed this thought as absolute lunacy, crazy to say the least. And he did so again and again and again for years and years. Eventually, out of desperation for peace of mind, he would give in to this call like our fishermen in today's gospel. He would walk away from his previous career. But like the disciples, no doubt, he would keep his family ties. He would work where he could while in seminary and to his great astonishment find himself ordained to serve our Lord in the Episcopal Church. This man, a humble disciple like yourself, stands before you this day. Like yourself, a disciple of Christ. Now I want that to sink in because I find time after time after time people do not view themselves as a disciple of Christ. They somehow think they are not worthy. They put the twelve up on a pedestal. These fishermen, these tax collectors, these physicians, these twelve, somehow are in a category by themselves. Not like you and I. We are followers of Jesus, but not disciples. So untrue. You, my friends, and I are disciples of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Plain and simple. You are called to follow Christ and to do his bidding just like those four fishermen in today's story. It's surprising to find ourselves with such a term as disciple. The ten that will be going to Costa Rica on Saturday are disciples of Christ. The ladies who work in the thrift shop are disciples of Christ. Our two ushers today are disciples of Christ. The worship team behind me are disciples of Christ, and indeed, you sitting there right this moment are a disciple of Christ. You set your nets down this morning and came here to worship our Lord. Folks, this is that are you talking to be moment we all have experienced somewhere in our lives. Yes, Jesus is talking to you. As we step into new and uncharted territory, as we move into a place of uncertainty, be it leaving for mission work in the field or be it construction of new facilities for new and expanded ministries here at Christ Church, I ask you to do what these disciples from so long ago did. Swallow hard, drop your nets, and follow Jesus wherever he calls you. Amen.